Hello, everybody. It's Joshua Hayes at BigWaveTraining.com coming to you with part one of three or four parts, depending on how fast we move tonight, of a stock market wrap-up for March 10th for you to use on March 11th or any other date because my analysis says, says can't even say that word, <clears throat> are good for a range of time periods like from a day to a week. So usually if you're watching these, it's my analysis is pretty good on the market for an uh, intermediate time frame. However, let's just go ahead and start now how I normally do. I want to start with the NASDAQ today and show you that the NASDAQ had a very nice day up 7%. And that very nice day up 7% came on volume higher than the day before. However, for everybody that's calling a bottom, I want you to realize, first of all, that it is great that we're holding around the November lows and that the relative strength line is much stronger now for the NASDAQ and that tech is leading. That's very, very positive. But before we go and call a bottom, I want you to realize that we did not sell off on low volume like we normally see in long-term bear markets that end that then turn bullish. Normally, the selling before the end is done on low volume. Clearly here, every single day of distribution within the 14 to 16 previous sessions, volume was higher. And even on the one session when the NASDAQ rose 3.90, volume was higher, didn't get above the 50. The next up session saw it come well off its intraday highs and volume was lower. So we only even got one accumulation day during the entire distribution process that we saw February to March on higher volume. However, I don't want to spoil anyone's mood out there because I know everybody's sick of the selling, including me, but I want everyone to keep things in perspective. Short term, with the strength of today's rally, short term we are up now. However, even sub-intermediate term, if we use the February highs, we're still clearly down. Intermediate term, if we go to October, November, even September, it's clearly down. Long term, and I'm going to use the October top, clearly still a downtrend. The intermediate term, you could give an argument. However, I don't think it's long enough that really we're kind of flat. As you can see here from 1121 to 310, negative 1.88%. So if anything, we're flat to down. So keep that in mind. Don't get too bullish off today's move. And if this is it and we're rallying higher, all I got to say are, where are the leading industries with leading stocks breaking out to new highs? Right now, with today's market mover, if this was a true bull market, the top leading industry would be running higher. If that was the mining and gold and silver stocks, why are they selling off? As these are the gold miners. Past two days, down 9.76%, while the NASDAQ is up 4%, 7% today. So just something to think about. I, if this was a true bull market, I don't think the bottom fishers of C, back. Let me see Fannie Mae or Freddie even moved today. And they, they jumped a little bit. Let's see AIG, I bet, moved. Yep. See, when the bottom fishers go after the worst sectors, and those are your leaders after a huge up day, that tells you that they're just buying the big cap stocks in these indexes, and that's what the rally is. There is no real accumulation. I'm sorry. Yet in the NASDAQ. And that can even be more clear by looking at a weekly chart. How many big, tall red bars do you see going back to the summer of last year compared to big, tall green bars? Folks, no matter what you want to think, that says it all right there. So until we start to see more big, tall green bars, there's no reason to be calling a bottom. We got time. I proved to you all in 2003, you don't need to get the exact lows to get a huge bull market, to get huge returns. Taser showed up months after the follow-through day in 2003. Same with many, many other winners. Just go review my longs. It's clearly there. And what about Apple 2004? Did you need to go long the bottom in 2002 to get a, a, a near 450 to 500% return in Apple in two years? 2004 to 2006? No. So just remember, we just need an uptrend. Then I will find individual stocks that will make us a ton of money. In a downtrend, we can just... Do the shorts that work, ride it through, and cut our losses on the shorts that don't work. We had two full covers today. We still have 51 shorts. That means that there's 51 out of 53 shorts I just had that still say, keep short. So 
Just something to consider. And also, how many new logs did I have after today? Zero. And I actually have a full sell. So that tells you that leading stocks are not leading us higher. And that's the most important thing. So keep this rally in perspective. Now, let's go to the New York Stock Exchange. Now, some of you may not understand. This is day three of a rally attempt, but this is now setting us up. If this was just day three or day four, it wouldn't be good enough because you need two up days before the fall through day. So this is day three of the rally attempt, but the second day of a fall through, um, of a proper fall through. So the market was making new lows here. New York Stock Exchange hit new lows. There's its first possible but day one. This was possible day one here in March. Let's show you over and over. Okay, so downtrend. Here's a possible day one, February 24th. This possible, this is day two of the rally attempt. Day three of the rally attempt. Day four now kills the beginning of the rally attempt. But since then, there wasn't even a second day up. So if we had a fall through day, it wouldn't have been right anyway. That just would have been up day number two. So you need three up days, the first two, whatever, and then the third one needs to be on higher volume than the day before, up at least 2%. So the February 24th uh, fall through doesn't work. Then we have our potential um, rally. Then we have March 4th, potential rally day number one. The very next day ended, rally ended. This is now th March the 6th. This is potential day rally number one. This is potential rally day number two. This is now your second up day to say, okay, the next up day now and the next, I guess, one, two, seven sessions, if it comes on higher volume than the day before, so it would need to be on a lot of volume tomorrow, for instance, and is up 2%, then we have a good follow-through day. However, until that setup occurs, it's not a follow-through day today, up 6% on higher volume. This is day two. Day one, day two of the rally attempt, day three of the rally attempt, day one, day two of the up days needed. The third up day is going to be your follow through day up day. So if we went sideways for three days, but we were going slightly lower and then had this 6% day, even though it's on the fourth day and you need the fall through to happen in the fourth to tenth day to be the most powerful, it wouldn't count because you wouldn't have had your second up day. So this may be day three of the attempt. But we now only have the first two up days now. So now we go looking for the fall through day. Let's see how much more time we have. Okay, we're starting to run out of time. So New York Stock Exchange, day three of the rally attempt, the official up day number two. Now you can look for your fall through day now on the NYSE. You can also do this on the Dow Jones Industrial Average as it has the very same look as the S&P 500, which has the same look as the New York Stock Exchange. So March 6th is day one. This is day two of the up days that you need. The third one is the one that you're looking for any day, though, actually now, now that you have your two up days. And this is going to be day one, day two, day three. Tomorrow's day four of the, of the Raleigh attempt. So day four of the Raleigh attempt is where you can now start looking for your follow-through day with your already two up days now sealed. However, unless volume is higher than the day before, which means it's got to be huge tomorrow or low the next day and then up the next day, it's still not a fall through day. Also, if leading stocks aren't leading and we have leaders like back and see, sorry, it's not a bottom yet. We may be setting up for a potential bottom, but it's not a bottom just yet. And let's look at the VIX today. Down 10%. People are really complacent. If the put call was 0.57 yesterday or 0.59, whatever it was, then it should be lower today. I don't see how it could rise on an up day. If that's the case, the put call must be at the lowest it's ever been. Here, actually, I can find out here, here in a second. Not now. I'll find out and I'll look in IBD later. I don't want to be giving the IBD information away for free. So let's look at oil. Oil dropped today to 45. Let's look at silver. Silver fell to the 50-day moving average, but what does it have? A bullish tail. Let's go all the way out on the price pattern so you can see the bullish tail. Look at platinum. You can see the bullish tail as it holds above the moving average. And then you can look at gold. You have a slightly bullish tail, though it does break below the 50-day moving average. So now you have to sell more of the stock you bought here and here on the in January for gold. And you got to get out with only a 4% gain. Hey, it's still a gain by using that simple technique. So it's not that bad. Last thing we look at is the dollar, DXY0. And the dollar held in there nice and strong. I can't believe we are printing money like we are. Just creating fantasy toilet paper money. And yet the dollar holds in and keeps rallying higher to new highs. 
I don't know how much longer that's going to last, but as long as it's up, you should be long. And if you were long the dollar from the initial move over the 50-day moving average, you now have a gain of 21% on whatever margin you have. So just keep that in mind, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. We're going to have a part two, a part three. And if need be, if I need to go on a soapbox, we will have a part four. I've got time if you've got time. I'll see you guys later on. The chat room's been banging, and I thank you guys for being around so we can have some excellent discussion. I've been very, very impressed with the chat transcript that I, whenever I'm not there. I've been very, very impressed. You guys are doing excellent keeping action going for me to actually look up and research items. I love you guys for that because that's how we're going to find winners is by me being able to research some new technology that you guys show me. All right, going to go and wrap up part one, part two, three, and four next for my subscribers. Aloha.